Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, and uh, it is December 5th, 2012. And we are doing a show for Kelsey tonight. <laughs> Welcome, Kelsey. Hi. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Um, but but one of the th one of the, there are a couple of frames that I wanted to put on this, and then we'll we'll meet our guests, and and others will be joining us as we go, I think. But um, you know, this is show three hundred and twenty-six uh, for those of uh, those of you um, who don't know. So we've been doing this a few years. Every Wednesday night, we gather here, and one of the things that we've been kind of figured out is that it would be wonderful if uh, students kind of started doing this kind of thing too. So we've been kind of pr promoting, asking them how they want to use Hangouts, maybe in different ways, and so far. Um, toward the end of last week's show, we finally asked, well, what do you guys want to do? And uh, Kelsey can repeat it, but she said something about starting an, an environmental club. And um, so it seemed to make sense to check in with the um, Alliance for Climate Change. Or is that, do I have the organization right? No, I don't. What Alliance for Climate Education. Education, and the yeah, okay. Ace right. is really easy, easy to remember. And then, right. and then we've also been in touch a little bit with um, One Day on Earth folks, and so that all sort of kind of rolled together in my head, and um, so we invited both of you on, and we'll, we'll be, we're thinking global and acting local here tonight a little bit, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so that's one thing, and, and I think there is a UN climate change conference happen, happening right now in Doha, Qatar, is that right? Do I have that pronounced correctly? So that's kind of that's another frame. It seems to me that it's appropriate that we're dealing with environmental issues here um, on TTT again tonight. But having said that, um, toward the middle there, you'll see one of my students, um, Monisha. Welcome, Monisha. Again, Hi. <laughs> thank you for coming on. Um, and. Um, Kelsey Shellhart, with her dad there, have been regulars on the show. Welcome. And Hello. I'm going to let the, the, the um, others of you, some people are joining us as we speak, I think, but that's fine. Why don't you guys introduce yourself? Um, uh, we'll start with Leah. My name is Leah Cuspa, and I'm the regional manager for the Alliance for Climate Education out in our Midwest region based out of Chicago. And what we do at ACE is we educate young people specifically about climate change, but in a way that I think really speaks to young people. And I would say our expertise beyond that educational piece is helping students like Kelsey start really amazing environmental clubs in their schools that are making systemic changes in their schools and then sort of going out into the community um, and doing projects abroad. Cool. So you'll we'll sort of be a case study for how you help Kelsey's of the world get going here, and it isn't just for high schools. I, I was reading your materials, and you you do seem to emphasize high schools, but we emphasize high schools. We do about twenty percent of our work in the middle school realm, and about eighty percent in the high school realm, and then we do some mentor mentee stuff with universities as well. Great. Okay, it'll be great to learn more about your organization and how we do this. Monica Hardy has joined us. Welcome, Monica. Can you speak yet? Sure. I'm just oh. having to up on mute. <laughs> okay. Welcome. And Cal Ruddick and um, is it and Daniel Lichtbaal, um is with us. Go ahead, guys. Introduce yourselves, please. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Kyle Ruddick. I'm the founder and director of a project called One Day on Earth. Um, One Day on Earth is a, well, it's an online community. It's a kind of a global time capsule, but also um, we produce annual events where people in every country in the world film on the same day. Um, the reason we're here is that Daniel and um, a few others at, at One Day on Earth, we've developed a um, educational toolkits to um, help uh, you know, students of all ages engage with the project and people from all over the world in different classrooms are actually engaged with the project to film next week on Wednesday, 12-12-12. Daniel, you want to say anything else about that? Um, yeah, just basically that this is our third year of doing the project and in the past we've had a lot of success with getting uh, students all around the world and, and schools involved and 
uh, we hope to continue to, to do so. Yeah, I think uh, the other element is is what what it, the participation. Um, everyone's video ends up on a, a geotagged global map, so there is an archive of everyone's participation um, in the project. And then, in addition, we make a feature length documentary film. The first of which definitely did have some student footage in the uh, the final film that was actually quite compelling. So reassure me that we're not too late, that we can still do this within a week. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could, you could decide to do it on Tuesday if you wanted to. I mean, I think that it's definitely one of those things where this, this year's theme um, that we're uh, – there's actually a whole bunch of different range of ways that we designed uh, lesson plans around, um, you know, people to engage with the project from an educational point of view, different, different ways to engage us, different parts of different subject matters, but also – this year's theme is what do you have and what do you need? And I think just even actually doing an interview project with students across classrooms, asking the questions, what do you have and what do you need? I think would actually produce quite compelling answers and quite an interesting discussion. And I, and I definitely think that throwing that out there is a very simple thing that you could do with, um, you know, you could do it with cell phone cameras, you can do it with high-end video cameras, you can do it with any type of camera you want, really. Um, it, it, we. Uh, where our video platform is that we utilize the Vimeo video platform. So basically, if you can upload to Vimeo, you can upload to our site as part of the project. Um, there is a lot of materials on our site, so we've, we've definitely built out the educational uh, potential um, as if someone wanted to actually take a whole semester-long course and build it around One Day on Earth. But it's also segmented enough that you could sort of to say, hey, today we're going to do this thing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and there are there are um, so there's kind of a quick start. There are ten or fifteen project ideas that if you don't want to, if, if you don't have time to do a full semester devoted to one day on Earth, you can kind of just grab one of the projects and you know get going in a couple of days. Yeah, and again, I think that that whole theme of what do you have and what do you need as like an interview. A lot of people there's um there's center there's different museums around the world. There's different filmmakers. Really engaging in that, like in, in you know hundreds of countries. So it will be an interesting th result to see how different people answer that question. And I actually think like um, you know getting getting students of all age to sort of like you know really d dive into that topic. Um, those those two topics. I mean the answers are going to be incredibly relevant too. So and as I said, you know you can do the one word answer, but then when you have to sit there and think about it a little bit, it might be even more. And. Um, my students actually participated in the 11 11 11 um, project and you know they really loved it um, anything from um, some kids did make a wish at 11 a.m. you know 11 minutes after the hour 11 seconds make 11 wishes they filmed themselves doing that uh, some kids that it was the play the musical so they just kinda documented their backstage uh, you know life uh, and then I also use it in the classroom to kind of introduce the students to other worlds. I got well, I, not other worlds, but you know other cultures. So we, I particularly remember they were taken with the guy, the scientist in Antarctica, who just kind of talked about what he was doing up there. And then there was this Pacific Island um, woman who talked about, um, or this community talking about how they were rebuilding the the reef or, or something you know that had been washed yeah, away and mangroves due to climate change yeah yeah and it was a climate change thing which makes me think that it's you know connected to what Leah's doing too uh, and then this year I've got a student who's also this is my last story this year I've got a student who's really political and she's interested in uh, kind of the teen um, apathy that she sees yeah I mean I think um, we have we, one thing to sort of bring up is that we've definitely um, focused also on making this a very service-oriented process. So that meaning that we've we partnered with about 60 nonprofits around the world, including some really big ones like the World Wildlife Fund, the Red Cross, um, the United Nations is probably our largest uh, partner, um, and many of them. Um, you know, one thing you know they they themselves internally are. Are filming things on that day about what they're doing and the good work that they're doing, but it also means that they use their social media so, to sort of engage people to film, you know, a, you know, something about the topics that they care about. 
And so it's a big tent project. I think that, you know, one thing is is that because, um, you know, we're really sort of making this big time capsule that almost any topic is appropriate, but we certainly um, really enjoyed being able to be a conduit for a lot of NGOs, uh, particularly environmental NGOs. Um, uh, 350.org was um, doing a big event the first the first time we filmed around the world on 10, 10, 10, and so they ended up having demonstrations all over the world, and I think that that was a real real galvanizer to keep that part of part of the project going. Um, so, and then of course, in some ways, you know, as we sort of dive into issues, uh, you know, thinking about um, general humanitarian issues combined with environmental issues, they they are incredibly intertwined. Uh, because uh, sustainable development is really sort of directly connected to the to um, to most environmental issues. If you really start to dive into how to um, how to sort of save the world, if, or more or less, better better. I can't think of better words to put it that way. Great. You know, and and at least uh, we'll get back to this by the end. One of the things that we could actually do, because we'll be on twelve 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 again next week is think about how we could use TTT for um, our piece of it in some way and, and invite some folks so we can make it very real that way. I wanted to get the students' voices in here and uh, maybe Kelsey could repeat what you were trying to do and what you are trying to do and then, um, you know, uh, one, one of the things we said last week was that there's a range of what young people do on video chats like this, from just sort of hanging out and talking to each other about, you know, hey, what's up, to um, helping each other with homework, to actually inviting some experts on, like you guys, to help make something happen. And, and there may be other ranges, too, but those are some ideas we, we were thinking about. So this is uh, an example of where we have some experts on to help Kelsey. But Kelsey, what do you what have you been thinking about, and what have you gotten going so far with your environmental group? It started out as a Girl Scout Silver project, but that idea kind of got replaced by another one, so I decided I, that I wanted to do it by myself. I didn't hear that. A Girl Scouts... Silver Award project. Oh, oh, okay. But I decided I wanted to do it on my own because we weren't going to do it as a group. And then it just kind of snowballed, I guess, into an environmental club. But I think that is the first thing that I want to set up is a recycling program and then see where we go from there. I'm on the video chat with my teacher. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Manisha said her mother came in and said, what are you doing um, <laughs> last week? Do you want to explain to your mother what you're doing? Go uh, ahead. <laughs> huh? That wasn't my mom. <laughs> that wasn't your mom? No, but I oh. actually didn't know what I was doing. Okay, great. Manisha, I'm, I'm glad to have you here. But, okay. You. So, Kelsey, uh, what are you thinking? Um, what, where are you in the process? The first person I talked to was like our teacher, mentor, sponsor person who was a, she's a sixth grade science teacher and she said that what I probably needed to do next was to make a list of ideas like what we're going to do and then talk to my principal and then get back with her. Okay. Leah, a student emails you or comes to you and says, you know, I want to start a club. You know, my science teacher said, make a list. What, you know, go ahead, talk. <laughs> let's let's, uh, let's uh, see how this, how, what you would do next to help Kelsey get going here. Yeah, so I think I would have a ton of questions for you, Kelsey. I would want to know first um, what the culture is like at your school. Do you have a pretty active club culture at your school where students join extracurricular activities and spend a lot of time in after-school clubs? It's pretty much, it's kind of half and half. About half of the students do nothing, but the other half are in two or three things. Okay, so you've got a kind of, sort of divided school culture where maybe you guys are not galvanized as a total unit. What is the total population of your school? How many students do you have there? Mm, about three or four hundred. Okay, so good smallish to medium-sized school. Um, do you think that maybe a, 
is one of your problems that you're facing getting other students on board with being interested what you're interested in and joining your club, like club membership? I don't think that'll be too much of a problem because I can get it put in our school announcements pretty easy and I can hang up flyers and talk to people, but I, I'm most worried about approval. I don't know how to go about that. Great. Just getting administrative approval from your school? Not yet. Okay, so to do that, I would write, I would try to get a template uh, together, maybe a letter that you can get some other students that are interested in being in your club to sign, and then you could go with maybe one or two other students, and you could present the petition or the letter that you got signed from some other students to your principal or to your um, assistant principal or whoever is the person that you need to get approval from. So I think that would be the first step, just to get in the, the club off the ground. Then you want to make it the most awesome club on campus. So I think the way to do that is to really inspire all of the students at your school because it, it's great to have you guys doing your own thing and working on a recycling project and doing campaigns but if you don't have the rest of the culture at the school the rest of the students at least informed about what you're doing if not excited it's going to be a lot more difficult I think to get projects off the ground so I would do something like an assembly where you can bring the school together either in an advisory period in the morning or sometime other assembly, maybe you have assemblies by class, that's pretty common at schools. Get everybody together and kind of present your idea. And, um, you know, to promote ACE a little bit in your region, your school is, is eligible for, for an ACE assembly where we could come to your school for free and we can give a little bit of a, a primer or a little bit of Climate Change 101 with this really cool presentation with like hip hop music and animation and stuff like that to sort of get the student body at least on board or informed with what the foundation or the reasoning behind you know, something like an environmental club at your school would look like. So I think that would be one of the first steps I would do. Um, any questions about any of that? And then we can kind of go into your, your recycling club idea as well. And by the way, anybody can interrupt. Just uh, if you don't know that yet. <laughs> go ahead. But go ahead, Kelsey. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, if I should get our school board involved in this or if it's just a, a building administrator or like how high up I need to go? That's a great question and what I would do also there's a great set of resources out there particularly if, if you're talking now about it, approval for the recycling project if you're looking for sort of a step-by-step -step, like airtight project plan ACE we have lots of different resources like that on our website and I can shoot some links over to you we have one project plan in particular called Trash Bash and it's a really beautiful project plan that details how to get a recycling project started at your school. It even has a form letter in there uh, that you could use to get approval from your administration or that you could bring to your janitorial staff or your custodial management staff to see you know a questionnaire okay what happens to recycling? Do we have free recycling pickup? How often is it picked up? Um, do they weigh it? Do we have a recycling score at our school? What is the cost associated to all these things? So there's a really nice questionnaire there that you can sort of bring to your custodial manager or your building engineer and you can run through to get more information to kind of complete the picture of what recycling already looks like at your school and what the capabilities are um, already for you. Then you guys can get into the nitty gritty of like, okay, do we have enough bins? Kind of take an audit of the different materials and things that you guys might have at the school or gaps that you guys are going to have to fill and what kind of money that would cost. Can, can I uh, ask something? Um, I, I'd like to take a step back maybe a little bit because we're talking about advocacy, right? Kelsey's this young girl who's a uh, young woman who wants to make a change for the better in her community and seems like you know, one day on Earth, and Leah, your um, group, like, how did you guys first start? You know, where does that spark begin to want to do something like this? Are you um, speaking to Kelsey? Like, where did she get her? Start? No, no, or? like, uh, actually, to maybe the one day on Earth folks, and then back to you, Leah. I was just wondering where it all began. Like, where do you get this spark? And, and kind of a quick story of how you got it going. You mean personally? Our guests. Yeah, personally, and then you know um, how how that turned into the organizations that you now run. And while you guys are thinking, there's a request in the chat to Paul. Can you explain how to do the lower third so people's names? Show um, up? It's been and, and I love this word. It's been de depreciated. That's so, all that. <laughs> so um, so uh, it's not so easy to do. We would okay. have to, yeah. So sorry about that. Sorry, Peggy. So, yeah, but so if you don't mind, remember that 
actually more people listen to this than view it. So they listen to it on a podcast. So it's it's useful to every once in a while say your name again if you don't mind. So <laughs> but that would uh, that would help. So yep, thank you, Monica. Who wants to start? Sure. Um, I guess. We'll, I mean, I I think that you know it's interesting. I think that when you how do I put this? I think that one day on Earth. Project. I mean, I know the moment that I had the idea to, to, to push forward with it, and it was definitely a moment of inspiration while watching music from around the world um, being played by different musicians from different parts of the world mm. that didn't speak the same language. And so their ability to communicate was really inspiring to me. The music they were able to make was really inspiring, and I sort of wanted to create something with that immediacy for filmmaking. Um, so I had this idea. I mean, that was really a moment... I'm not sure how your recycling um, uh, program idea came to you, but I mean, I think it's one of those things where you know you sort of start dreaming about what the results might be right away, and um, you know I think that like you know definitely thinking about where what what a um, what a cleaner, more environmentally friendly school um, will look like is something that will pull you through, and I know that. With with us, it's been like a shared vision of like, well, we're going to make this thing happen, no matter what. We're going to be in every country in the world making documentary films, and so uh, that sounds like this crazy big idea. Uh, it was, but I mean, I think it's no le no more important than starting you know uh, a recycling program, and and obviously, so many people are going to appreciate what you what you established there. And, for that reason, I think the the rewards I know for what we do and, and what you end up doing will be you know, really emotionally felt from what you eventually do. That's I don't know. That's how I can speak to that. Yeah, I, I I think just to build on that, what you said earlier oh. as well, um, and this is Leah speaking from Ace, is that you're looking at analyzing and figuring out what the critical needs are and I think part of my inspiration I've always been in the nonprofit sector since I graduated from college I was doing international relief and development work before this and I've traveled quite a bit globally as well and when you see I think needs critical basic needs that need to be filled um, I think I've carried that with me to my work in the environmental movement in the climate movement which I've been firmly grounded in for about the last four years and every school is different. I go to a lot of schools that have excellent recycling and industrial composting and you know their students really don't appreciate it and they need more of a, a big movement building effort at their school to get people really excited. And then I go to other places where the critical need is just basic paper recycling. They don't recycle anything yet at the school. You know they really just they need to start there. So everybody has such a sort of a different place and a different um, you know, a different set of needs that they need addressed. And I think meeting those needs is a big part of my passion, just being able to figure what those are, figure out what those are, and not offer something, I think, that people don't need, but being very critical about, about what the needs are. I, I think I'd want to add something to what you're, you're attempting to do, too, which is really critical to, like, your own personal educational and, you know, growth process, which is that I... Um, I wasn't really a very good student until I started to approach things by the point of achieving something or like seeing some sort of result out of something. So the actual education that you're going to give yourself just by actually saying I'm going to achieve and establish something, it I can't I can't I'm, I can't over let's see I I don't think I could overestimate its value because that's that's a real world skill when you actually set out and do something and and actually sort of achieve that thing and it's actually a public service that people recognize it's going to be you know I think incredibly more rewarding and than, than, um, in many ways in the long run also something that's going to teach you in, tw in 10 years you know you're going to be using the skills that you learned when you like set up that this recycling program that you're about to do so I can I just um, what I'm hearing and I was an advisor in an environmental club for a while and what this what was hard was you know i didn't want it to be my club as as the advisor and how do you you know how do you keep the motivation the hard work the i mean what you just said is that it's uh, it's the student wanting to do it that makes it worthwhile right um so 
did it. But and then Ace, you guys are so amazing. And then like your videos just knock me out. <laughs> but the, but there's like so much energy there, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You know, I want to I want to kind of keep catch up with you guys. Um, so do you hear that? Do you hear that as a question? I'm like, how do we keep the student passion in the center while Absolutely. also supporting? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I would answer that by saying we have to provide opportunities that are not mundane to students. So it's pretty ordinary that you'd meet every week maybe for a club at your school. What we try to do is provide external opportunities for students to hang out with other students from other schools. So about six times a year in all of our regions all across the United States, we have leadership trainings where students can get some of the skills you were talking about. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, general, the documentary filmmaker gentleman about those transferable skill sets that I think are so important. So we have these trainings. There's usually like 40 or 50 high school students from about 10 or 15 different schools in that geographic area. They come together to a great venue. We usually get like an aquarium or a museum or something. It's on a Saturday. They can get service hours. Sometimes those are required for school or for clubs. So it's nice that they can cash in on those. Then they can come in and get skills around public speaking or setting smart goals, creating timelines, workshopping a project, fundraising, really whatever, whatever they need to get skills in. And what's brilliant about it is that if Kelsey was going to sign up for a training, it's always free. We always feed you lunch. And when she signs up, she'll actually pick from skills that she's interested in getting. So she, if she's interested in Media 101, we'll bring in a partner that can teach her how to write a great blog post or how to use iMovie or things like that. If she's interested in public speaking, we'll have a workshop on that. Um, or waste. We often have waste science um, workshops where we bring in waste partners to talk about composting or recycling or things like that. So or, I think that's one or, good thing. Or, manage, man, or managing a student hangout, by the way. Just to throw Absolutely. That in. <laughs> Managing a okay. Google Hangout. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It's funny, you know, related to where we, we come from, you know, a big part of um, where we're, we're pushing our, our educational side is media literacy and this idea of using social media to really sort of achieve the things you want in the world. And I think that, you know, obviously, you know, you could probably utilize some sort of web page, whether it be, I don't know what's, I don't know what's sanctioned it anymore. If, if, if they, if they Facebook's cool now or not with schools, but it, it, you know, Google Hangout is just another tool that could be something where people are engaging with. And I, I think you know that's what that's what we're doing on a day to day basis to keep the energy going is just applying an entry point. <laughs> um, and oh, there's a question. Is that a question? Yeah, there you go. Go ahead, Kelsey. A good. lot of the stuff you're talking about is like high school and so on and so forth, but what can I do now? Well, You're in eighth grade now. You're close. Why, oh, yeah, why, does, have, it, why does it feel like high school to you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We have sixth graders. Uh, you know, we have 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 18-year-olds. And what I love about having a senior and a sixth grader at the same training is the learning potential there. And I have to say the seniors behave a lot better when they have, like, a sixth grader there that they have to be a good role model for. But... Um, we often have, have middle schoolers involved, and some of my most dynamic middle schoolers, I can think of Locke Elementary, it's a Chicago public school, they're a first through eighth school, and their environmental club is their sixth through eighth students. They did the most amazing um, sustainability pledge campaign, which turned into a recycling project. They were, they're going to be feature, featured in our new ACE trailers. So I've seen middle schools, I mean, steal the light, the limelight from high school students many times. You have such a powerful voice. It's just about making sure that you can connect with the other students on your campus that are interested in what you're interested in and, and use that voice, that voice that you have. There's an, yeah, there's an interesting um, sort of skill set that I think that the youth has of today that is sort of um, like kind of lost in the middle is the best way I could put it. There, I think that, you know, you guys are already interacting in so many ways through all sorts of different technology and you're actually sort of automatically absorbing what gets traction and you're sort of seeing and learning automatically what sort of post on Facebook, what sort of video on YouTube, what things are sort of like attractive in this sort of new space of consuming media and I think that related to that you, the, I guess what I'm saying is that in some ways I, I wouldn't underestimate your ability to sort of motivate your friends um, with some of those tools. You know, it may take some trial and error. You may see sometimes something actually sort of works better than other things. But I do think that there's a lot of um, 
I, I think right now, I mean, the fact that you're interested in doing it, it means that, and, and it sounds like you're taking the first steps. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, this is where we need lower thirds. She, on my screen, you're right here. <laughs> it's okay. The, the woman who's doing, who runs all of these awesome educational environmental programs. This is Leah, um, yes. Has, Go ahead. Leah, yeah, yeah, has incredible tool sets. And, like, I, it's, it's, I wish stuff like that for me when I was in high school and, and, and middle school, um, but there certainly wasn't. So, you know, the, take, take the prize of this technology. It's definitely fun to use and empowering. Kelsey, what city, what city and in, in school do you go to specifically? I live in Weefield, Indiana. I go to Kankakee Valley. Oh my gosh, you actually live by me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I mean, relatively to ever, anybody else on the call, I think. How far is that? How far is your school from um, the border between Indiana and Illinois? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. We frequently go to schools in Northwest Indiana. We've got a bunch of schools that we work with down there. So I'm thinking we should just we should just come to your school for a presentation and get students excited and start working with you directly. Okay. What's the name? What's the name of your school? It's Kankakee Valley. Uh huh. And it's a it's a elementary school or a middle school? Middle. So as you as you're planning that, I want to get Monisha in here a little bit. Monisha did a, a, a wonderful post. I don't know if you I didn't send it to you yet, Monica, but um, where she took um, Sierra's um, TED talk and and responded to it and talked about Sierra a little bit. Um, and so we're still trying to um, get you guys connected. But Monisha, I wanted to say one more thing that was happening, and this is kind of an example. Um, I, the, our school in the South Bronx, which is very different than Indiana over there, but, um, is, um, is right by the Bronx River. And um, there's just like a 10 minute walk from our school is, is this uh, Rocking the Boat, which is a great organization where kids build boats, young people build boats, and then they um, do some environmental stuff. Um, and, and when I came to the school to two years ago, I really wanted to hook up with these people and I never did. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't, things like that happen, like things don't get done on some level. But I just got an email today, Manisha, where, where we said, um, where they, they said that they're, they had an opening and if we wanted to bring a class over, and their one requirement was that there was an enthusiastic teacher. And I raised my hand and said, okay, I'll do that. Um, but so I'm just wondering, do you think um, that would be of interest, or how could we get kids in our school kind of interested in that kind of project? Like, like I told you before last week when I did this, the first time I did this, I said, it's a lot of students that wouldn't mind doing certain things, but it's about the maturity as if you think that they're mature enough to do it. There's certain students that would be like, okay, well, yeah, I want to do it, but then they're not mature enough for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly how you would approach the situation to other students, but if you bring it up, then there's some kids that are like, okay, well, I'll do it, but then it's your choice to be like, well, is this student mature enough to do it or not? Can mm -hmm. they handle this kind of situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we come up across all sorts of confounding factors working in schools, I think, where you know, sometimes you have people actively working against what you're trying to do. Um, sometimes they're just not into it or, you know, they, they don't want to participate. And that's one of the hardest things. Um, you know, I think education, like school-wide education and building that school culture from the ground up, uh, from the grassroots, I think is one of the most important things that I've witnessed in my experience. And when it comes from the voices of the young people themselves, it's great if ACE comes in, it, you know, all that is wonderful. But if it can actually come from your voice, if you guys can host, host some sort of school-wide assembly where you talk about this as a group and everybody's on the same page, and it's not kind of like fractal you know, pieces of information coming from all different directions, if it's all there central, um, I've seen that work really, really well to get students that maybe, or even teachers that aren't really interested in helping out on board. Like with my school, because we're closing, within June of 2013, they're going to close my school. So it's going to be like a totally 
different school with different teachers and stuff like that. So they're more, well, most of the students anyway, are more focused on um, getting the rest of their credits or in passing the regions that they need. So, like, most of them is, have the mindset of if I don't need this, that's if this is not going to help me graduate, then I'm not going to do it. They're not looking at the, the better side of it, like, okay, how is this affecting other people rather than yourself? I have a great pitch for you, for those students. So I'm going to use the analogy of my dad, who does not believe in climate change and will not be swayed, but he's a very energy efficient guy. If you pitch him getting renewables or getting some sort of weatherization or energy efficiency retrofit on his home, he's all for it because when you frame it in the mechanism of him saving money, climate change or not, he is going to do it. So if you can incentivize participation by saying, hey, participating in this project or getting great results is going to look great on a job resume, you know, or a college resume, or if you're going to go to a tech school or um, some sort of skills training after high school or just go right into the workforce, that's going to look amazing on your resume. And you need to get that resume built while you're in high school, no doubt, or no doubt about it. So that might be a good framing me mechanism or a way that you can talk to students to incentivize it so that you're kind of speaking to what their needs are um, as students. Uh, Manisha, you're, I, I just want, go ahead. I, I, I heard Monica starting to talk there. But I, let me, I, you're a leader. I don't know if you know that. But um, a lot of the, um, a lot of your friends kind of pay attention to what you do and, and um, you know, would respect your opinion and in, in stuff. Do you, do you recognize that? Not really, like, mm -hmm. because it was said to me in this year and last year that I was more of the follower, but I never really understood it because you can see the difference from what I do and, like, the work that I give in and rather than the work that everybody else gives in. So regardless of what I did, I always got my work done. But coming, like, from somebody else, like, I respect that because I've never heard nobody else say that. Everybody else says the total opposite. Okay. Yeah. But I never cared. Cool. There's all different so, types of leaders and sometimes yeah. ones that lead silently by example are like the most powerful leaders in my opinion. Hey Christian, welcome. Perfect timing. I'll bring him into the conversation. Okay, great. Um, so and and look, I, I wanted to try I hope this doesn't force this, but I'm gonna do it anyhow. How could we use, because one day on Earth is happening next week, right? So how could we use that sort of enthusiasm around doing that kind of project to launch some of these other projects? Is that, yeah, am I forcing too much of a connection there? Uh, or, yeah. um, <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, I think it sort of depends. I, I'm, I'm sort of trying to make the connection there. I mean, I think that... Ultimately, if there if there was a uh, if there was a story that someone wanted to tell with video that would help you know sort of encourage whatever sort of participation or, or sort of service that you're after, that would off that would possibly be a great choice. Um, you can do that any day. You don't have to do it on the you know twelve 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 one day on Earth. Although you know then you, you get another platform for that video to exist by doing that. But mm -hmm. ultimately that would be the only thing I could offer. But I do I do also sort of am a believer even though, you know, I'm a filmmaker and we work in media and we're all about it. But I do know like really a lot of this stuff comes down to conversations too. So I, I wouldn't want to ever over overestimate um, the video is like a nice piece that people can share and be a flagship behind whatever you do, but, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, the uh, the direct commitments of people verbally in many cases. So. And um, I would say that, you know, just looking at the education page, Paul, a lot of it is pretty closely tied to what we do on Youth Voices, like um, their one project, Proof by Picture, challenges your students to ask a question, the answer to which can be found within one day of observation. Uh, you know, that seems pretty much the inquiry model that we use in all our classrooms. So to me, there seems like a lot of pretty easy entry points um, to just join some of the groups that are set up on that site uh, mm -hmm. is what I'm going to pitch to my students. You know, find something that looks uh, doable for you, and, and we'll see what they come up with. 
Da Daniel, can you tell us about some other ones that we could do quickly? Um, he's got some good ones. Jeez, <laughs> oh, um, I'm on the spot a little bit here. Um, I, I think I might have to actually pull up the page. I mean, there, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, like, there are a lot of local environment projects. They're about you know going out and explore, exploring. Um, you know your your urban environment if you're in a city or beaches or wherever and just kind of exploring mm. um, where you live. Um, there are um, activity based projects like uh, making a meal or and you know filming the process of doing that or writing a song or performing a song, uh, choreographing a dance. There's that um, one that's kind of interesting. It's a it's a like a photographic history project where you find a historic picture yeah. from your hometown and then you go and analyze and you recreate the shot that's within that picture and you kind of show the difference between the past and now. There's a lot of investigation. Uh, I mean, I think it, it, but you know, these are all sort of suggestions for people jumping off points. As far as related to the sort of advocacy these guys are doing, I mean, we also have a page that's called Film for a Cause. And it's sort of a, um, you know, we're actually sort of striking the fire under that page right now. There's about 100 people on it, but they, they're just now sort of getting energized again. And so that's like a big, broader, that's not just an educational group. That's like a site-wide group that's on our site that's actually kind of interesting. And it's really just a place for people to talk about what cause they might be like, you know, um, advocating and sort of a place they can repost their video afterwards and, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different groups that um, have used that page in the past, including the Red Cross and World Wildlife Fund and, and whatnot. So um, that's a that's another entry point I think that might be as far as the advocacy side, just from the point of view of you know, kind of kind of a um, you know, we're, we're what we're doing. Like I said, it could happen any day, and I, I kind of like I can't say that enough. You know, I think that there's 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 what what uh, a vi making a video is really just a communication piece. You know, I think that you know what what you're talking about with recycling is really a whole campaign, and so there's definitely more to it. And I think that um, is it Leah or Leah? Leah. 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 Leah's got she's got the tools that really are going to provide success in a, a lot of ways regarding that. And I I don't know what everyone else's projects are here actually. Um, that might that might inform also if there's any other points of, of, of uh, advice or sort of um, input that we could give. Well, I, I was wondering, to what degree is it important to have like a global uh, frame as you do on these other local projects? You know, we say that, and you know, global global thinking, local local doing kind of thing. Local acting. So, is One Day on Earth a global project, or is it, you know, just talking about what's going on in your community? Well, it's it's sort of both. I think that when you're on the stage of like this is going to be put on a global stage, I think it makes mm -hmm. people think a little bit differently about how they communicate. I think it actually makes them better communicators in some ways because they're sort of thinking anybody in the world could see this. So it's sort of like an interesting. Uh, both excitement um, to some degree because you know you're representing a, a specific point on the map, um, mm -hmm. but also, um, I mean, in many cases, people do take the opportunity to make it a very local thing, and I think that that's great. Um, I do think that in that way, um, we are providing like a kind of a that 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 combination of um, of uh, of value um, for people to participate um, because. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's very interesting. As you said, you you went to the mangroves there. I think it, that was um, that was either in the Maldives or possibly one of the small. That was Chris, uh, yeah. Kiribati. Yeah, it's probably in Kiribati. So you know, you, students got to go and see you know these people planting mangroves in Kiribati, and they're doing a total local project. It was a total local service project. Um, it was uh, indigenous people planting mangroves. And you know, really trying to save their island, um, in so many ways, because um, you know they're faced with rising sea levels, and and this is like something they were doing, and and we we encourage this in many ways for people to, you know, 
to, to, to film these things. And what was interesting is without that, we wouldn't have had participation from Kiribati in the project, um, which is uh, not an easy place to, to get um, participation in. So um, it was sort of actually interesting that that was like, hey, that's the biggest news going on there, um, actually, in a lot of ways. Um, but also um, was very focused on uh, both uh, locally sort of informing other people in the village, but also from the idea of, um, you know, a little bit of a, not a plea for help exactly, but definitely there was a sense like, yeah, people outside of here are going to know that we're doing this and that this is a problem and this is how we're trying to, trying to look through it. So, so looking at, at the videos that um, exist already and maybe picking out some that are about climate is, is certainly one easy connection that people can Yeah, make. absolutely. I mean, I think that even if the idea of, um, you know, as you said, advocacy in general, it's sort of like presenting a problem and a story sort of motivates people to find solutions. And I think that, like, you know, if the, it, I, I think that that level of media literacy, as I go back, that everyone right now has incredible power at their fingertips if they can just find the right story to tell. And, and that's, that's amazing. If you find the right story to tell about something that you care about right now, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't really matter how much money you have, that can be part of this huge Internet thing it can actually sort of motivate people to, to sort of be more involved. And, it, you know, so the challenge is really that creative side, but I think you don't get good at that until you try and you start, you start communicating your ideas. And so I, I do think that we're in a new era of, of how video is sort of, like, influencing everything, and that's what we're about. So I think, um, you know, it does fit in. It automatically fits. We're on a video chat right now. I mean, it automatically fits into the the, the um, communication scheme of any service project that anyone might get involved with. What's been brought up a lot is um, it, it doesn't need to just be one day. How do we keep people motivated to be doing it and to own it? Um, Kelsey, I threw in a couple links earlier in the chat on um, the ed tech side. Uh, the Fun Theory, um, Volkswagen's The Fun Theory, and then um, Dan Pink's Emotionally Intelligent Signage. And I think it's huge um, in, in doing it locally, um, leaving a reason why. I mean, there's the story right there. You find something you're passionate about, then you, go, you fold back onto yourself and the reason and create, um, you know, a sign instead of saying, stay off the grass. It's, you know, this is why you would do that. Um, trash cans that make cool noises when you throw stuff away so people are looking for trash to throw stuff away. Um, so bringing Christian into this, the guys right next to you are from One Day on Earth and next Wednesday, by next Wednesday, they're collecting films from people and the questions that they're asking I think are huge. What do I have and what do I need? And I think the biggest story that I hope comes out of this is that we live in a time of abundance. You know, we'd be smart about all of this. We, we really do have all we need. But anyway, I think those are two great resources to help this be um, intrinsically motivating. Cool. Christian, what's on your mind? A lot right now. Um, a lot. We, we uh, I was just hanging out with my friends and like we were painting that's sorry that's why I couldn't come in like <laughs> we were doing these murals on these walls but um wait wait slow down tell us more what were you doing painting where uh, were the where were the wall where were the walls and what kind of murals uh like it's is not like outside huge it's like I have this little back house in my in the back of my house and um we just we just started painting it one day and like we we like we got a projector and we started painting cool stuff on it and I don't know it's like a big thing now we it's really fun we got into it that's what we were doing earlier and like I didn't see I forgot about it but uh are you like, are you recording your process are you taking pictures or doing video of, of uh we're, we're taking pictures we're taking pictures of some of them like most of them are on Instagram and stuff but uh. Yeah, I haven't taken a video. I, I took a video of the one I did in my room. Like, I'll probably post that up soon, like, make a little time lapse kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, nah, nothing, like, big. It's just, we're just doing it for fun right now. But, 
<laughs> I have a I, I have a quick question because like I, I was listening to that, but like when Monica was talking, my internet like lagged out. So like, what what are the videos about, and like what are the topics and stuff? Uh, it's great to say it again. Go ahead. And then Leah, if we could come back to you to help us think about. You know, even next week, if if um, if we could do something to get uh, help Kelsey get started, um, maybe connecting with One Day on Earth, or maybe not. But go ahead. It's okay to repeat because maybe some people are just catching up with us here. <laughs> so Kyle, go ahead. Yeah. Go okay. The videos you. and the topics. Well, we were yeah. discussing some videos that were made for One Day on Earth, and I don't know if you're are you familiar with the project at all. No, uh, no, not really. Sorry. Okay, so so you know the it's a it's a worldwide participatory media project that during one day people in every country in the world are contributing um, video content to be geotagged. Sorry. Wait, 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 sorry. Okay, there were I lagged out again. I'm really sorry about this. Like my internet. It's okay. Stuff. It's okay. It's okay. They're, they're worldwide, and then like boom, you lagged out. They're <laughs> worldwide. Um, video project where people in every country in the world will be um, filming video and documentation of 12-12-12 which is next Wednesday and um, everybody's contribution will be geotagged onto a, a Google map where you can see an archive of every the video that everybody makes that day. Uh, we've done it before in the past we did on 10-10-10 and 11-11-11 you can kind of you can surf those videos those were some of the yeah. videos that we were talking about, and um, you know, next uh, next Wednesday, um, the theme this year is what do you have or what do you need, or both? I guess those questions, and it sort of can be answered both um, verbally, but it also can be um, answered visually. Um, in other words, you can think about answering that question by showing the images of the things that you think that you have or you need. All right, that's cool. That's really cool. So, like. Uh, I can make a dance video and like I I want I need some dance in my We life. actually you know it's funny it's it, <laughs> on on a side note we have something called the uh the 121212 global song collaboration and if you dance or you make music um what we what our composer actually put together some guide tracks with a specific key and BPM and you can film yourself dancing or singing or playing an instrument on top of those tracks and cool. then you separate it out so you don't record what you're hearing. You put it on headphones and you record it, and then you send that in, and then we're going to mash that all up into a music video made well, in all different places around the world. We've actually already done that. We did this last year, and it, it came out awesome. Um, that's actually on. It's uh, the, the direct link for that, if you're interested, is um, um, uh, www.onedayonearth.globalsong. Uh, the global song one day on Earth. Well, I, I think check it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll check it out while we're on here. I think it's uh, www.onedayonearth.globalsong.com. Uh, cool. uh, oh, uh, Definitely try to do that. Um, and that has a. Um, last year we had a, a, world, a world famous DJ. Um, everybody who did it last year ended up in the music video, so that was um, that was pretty. Um, um, it was just in your auto type. Yeah. All right, Leo. Yeah. As they're yeah. doing that, can can you come on back in and and say, can you imagine for us a little bit how we could have some fun with all of this stuff and then use that as a way to kick off an environmental club? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, that's a big question. Um, three things that I know as an individual working at ACE that I want to come out of this call. Mm -hmm. A, I want to do the global song and dance collaboration with my husband. <laughs> we play in a band together, so I'm definitely cool. doing that. Um, number two, uh, you know, your student in your school in the South Bronx, we do have an educator mm -hmm. in the Bronx. Her name's Lana Dawson. She was just on the Climate Reality Project with um, with Al Gore. She's a, an amazing rock star. She's been with the organization. We we actually started almost the same day, and we share a birthday. So Lana is amazing. And she's going to be your ACE educator there for your school if you'd like her to come in. I'll make a cool. direct connection there. Um, and she's right in the Bronx, so that's perfect. Um, policy, lastly and most importantly, I want to put you in touch with either Paige or Sophie. I have two educators in the Chicago area. And like I said, we frequently blitz down to the border area. You know, it's about 40 minutes south of here. 
of where our primary office is in Chicago, so like northwestern Indiana. I would love to get in touch, A, with your faculty sponsor, because I think that individual at your school, I think, is going to be a great program hero. That's going to be the, the, the teacher or the adult on campus that's going to be your best advocate to sort of pave the conversation that we want to have with the administration or your activities director, or whoever it is that can get sort of ACE's foot in the door so that we can come and work with your school. So I can send you or your dad by email some information about that. Um, and, you know, I'll send it from my email and we can maybe have a phone conversation offline here where we can talk about what the next step look like together. Um, for you, you know, if you want to bring your teacher or your faculty sponsor for your club um, up to speed sort of on the conversation that you had or, you know, maybe you want to do one of these great videos or a viral video about the project that you want to submit by next week for the one day uh, project. I think that would be a great idea. Our students tell stories all the time. Um, I think that would be a really cool way to introduce this to your, to your student uh, body. But most of all, I think just sort of pave the conversation a little bit with your faculty sponsor and talk to this person. Do you have a question, Kelsey? I was thinking about after the One Day on Earth, like after all the videos are put together and put up, to do an assembly at school and show the video and then have an I, I have I need, I have garbage I need to recycle. Just kind of branch off from there. I think that would work well. That's a cool spin. What do you guys think about that at One Day, One Earth? That's pretty good. <laughs> that's definitely good. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I like it. Go for it, Kelsey. I gotta, love that idea. Got to do it and report, report next week, though. <laughs> I can do it. And then, oh, good. <laughs> and then keep going. It doesn't have to just be that thing, as, as everyone's been pointing out. Kelsey, how do you feel about your video making skills? And do the One Day One Earth people think that they have any great resources to help her in terms of um, shooting a video or some great tips? I mean, there's definitely uh, there's a lot. There. What would be like the quickest sort of like tip sort of guide in that in that in that mm -hmm. curriculum? Because there's definitely what we, we what we put together was um, you know. Um, the, yeah, there, like there's, well, there's one there's one tip that really comes to mind uh, that uh, really really helps, which is to either if you can find a tripod, use it, or at least set the camera up someplace uh, where it's still and the shot is stays composed if possible. A lot of people have the tendency to do something which is what's called the hose piping, right. where you just kind of like move the cameras around so much that it's once you actually watch it it becomes really distracting mm -hmm. so that's one simple thing you could do is either find a tripod or you know set the camera up someplace yeah I mean Still. I think there's 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 definitely like it within the um, within our educational materials there's a lot of tips but I think you know just um, think about one I think of think of a, a short duration that's my biggest tip I think the effectiveness of videos online when you think about what you see and what people like if it's under a minute that's probably a good duration for something that does significant advocacy for the simple idea of, of starting a recycling program because you make a 10 minute video people are going to zone out in the first 30 seconds and I think unless you just have like amazing <laughs> bad garbage videos that just you know are, are disgusting and everyone's appalled but I think even then you're probably th probably 45 seconds to a minute, and you've hit throwing an explosion every couple seconds. Just throwing an explosion and then keep every dogging. couple seconds, and um, <laughs> no, but I, I if you if you have that ability, I really don't. Uh, I don't. I can't advocate you blowing things up, but um, maybe maybe through some that's, some visual effects. Yes, that's what she was saying. <laughs> Kelsey, what are your skills like in video? I've made stuff for Girl Scouts. I make stop motion videos. Yeah. I mean, nothing wow. too major, but I learn quickly. Nice. <laughs> I stop motion's fun. I mean, if you could do something, stop. I motion. like them. Yeah. And, I mean, I think I think that just keeping it short, remembering um, how important your <laughs> clean audio is. You know, if you're if you're filming something, you're going. I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. That's always we, we, a, that's we always often a, forget that it's not just video. It's not just, you can just post visual. Yeah. Video. Yeah. If you got the radio on in the background and you plan on using that audio, turn it off. You know, miss. Remember that. Think of it as a as a as if you're recording just audio too. 
And if you do both, the but I mean, if you do stop motion, that's like I love the look of stop motion. That's always sort of an immediately visually engaging sort of form to sort of play with. You might be able to do some fun stuff with it. So, Ace, how how long has Ace been around? Just four four years. Wow, you guys are like community organizers nationally, right? I mean, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, about a, a million and a half students we've we've educated over the last three and a half years. That equates to a few thousand schools. Um, we're in all the major cities, the New Yorks, the uh, Chicago's, the L.A.'s, San Francisco, Denver, all those kind of places. Um, you know, the biggest thing that we do, I think, though, besides the educational piece, that's really how we get students engaged, though. We'll go to a, we'll go to a public school in Chicago and present for, like, a thousand students at an all-school assembly. And we'll get like 200 students to show up at an environmental club meeting. We call them ACE action teams. But um, that's sort of the way that we get students really engaged and really inspired with this sort of awakening moment like, oh my goodness, climate change is happening and this is really the issue of our generation and it's up to us to think of creative solutions to solve this issue. And the way that we can have control is by doing this in our schools and communities where we already have influence, right, where we already have power. So that's the biggest thing. And then beyond that is just meeting the needs of the school having our educators go in and sort of help students figure out what the needs are, whether it's recycling, composting, a letter writing campaign to local legislators, you know, whatever it is that they're interested in doing, we want to help build skills um, um, to do that. And we partner with 350, all the great organizations like that. Uh, I hope to aspire some Tate to be like the youth version of uh, 350.org, but we do a lot of work with them and our young people do as well. Interesting. Very cool. Um, we're, we're sort of out of time. We, I think we went over our one minute there, by the way, um, that Cal mentioned. But um, <laughs> we're over an hour here, too. But uh, hopefully somebody's still listening. Um, we're going to give um, Kelsey, Christian, and Manisha last shot here. And, and I, But I want to ask you guys to kind of say um, what you – just a just a quick idea about how we could address this question of um, what what do you have and what do you need in next week's show, and it'd be great if we did it with students. If we could get a bunch of youth on here to kind of do that, that would be kind of exciting. I think that yeah. I don't know what it should be about, but I think it would be better if I had more students rather than just three or four. It I'd at least have a couple of teachers. And then each of them bring one of their students. You could bring a friend. Yeah, I could, but I don't. Well, my friends from school, I don't think they're mature for this. So we could. There are a few. We could. We could manage that. Okay. That's a great suggestion, though. Thank you, Christian. You have any thoughts? Can you join us again next week for this? Yeah, for sure. For sure, I'll yeah. do my best. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, I, I always have this thing where, like, I don't like to uh, keep it like this, like, like in one lane. And, like, I always think that everybody has something. So it's, like, not always students. Like, sometimes it's, like, the parents that are at home, like, you know, working every day. You know, like, or sometimes it's, like, those people, like, those, like, it's, I don't know. Like, I, like you need, you need I, I don't know. Very cool. Yeah, you know, uh, you're lagging or something. To, but so, so, so over the next few days, we'll we'll shoot some emails to each other and try to figure out what what we'll do next week around this theme or these themes again. Kelsey, you get last word tonight. It looks like it's snowing there again in Indiana. It is rather cold. <laughs> I I really like the ideas we put out. Now I'm thinking about assemblies and kind of getting the ball rolling here. But I. I really liked Christian's idea of don't set a time, just kind of go, because we always seem to have to cut these off. So I think that would work really well for next week's, or pretty much just whenever we can fit it in. Hmm. Very cool. Okay. Um, at that, we're going to cut this off. I, you got, how do I follow that? Anyway, th th thanks. thanks so much for everybody. Lots of great ideas, and we'll follow up on it. Um, and the uh, websites are pretty easy, but do you want to say again, it's one day on earth org, is that right? And ace, ace dot. It's ace space dot org, a c e s p a c e dot org. Okay, great. So that's how to follow up, and uh, we'll be uh, posting this up at edtechtalk.com. 
uh, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network. And I um, want to thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, who helped us uh, get all this going at that point. By the way, TTT is... Um, and Youth Voices are up for Edublog Awards, so anybody who wants to go vote for uh, those two sites, please do. We'd be happy to have you do that. Although, we don't emphasize all that too much. We, it's, it's these personal connections that matter most to us. Thank you all, and uh, we'll see you again. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, thank Good night. you. Yeah. Bye. Oh, no, thank you. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>